Squints, Einstein has been kidnapped. I came into the studio today only to find the place trashed and my little buddy missing. So we're gonna do five forensic science experiments that you too can do at home to help bring Einstein back home. First, we'll start with the ransom note. It's all relative, but I hope you understand the gravity of the situation. You'll never see Einstein again. He's gone, that, that was a terrible poem. There are two simple experiments we can do on this. First, we can analyze the ink used to write this note. Inks may all look the same, but different kinds of markers use different chemicals. We can compare the ink here to the ink used on this YouTube comment that was mailed to me for some reason uh, a few weeks back. It says, uh, it's from it's me underscore Niels Bohr. And it says that Einstein is by far the worst part of this video. He has to go. What a terrible comment. We'll cut out a strip of each note that has some ink on it to test. We'll also test out some different markers to get an idea of what kind of pen our culprit may have used. Pour a small amount of rubbing alcohol in the bottom of a cup or jar and carefully place the paper strips inside. Take note, make sure the alcohol doesn't ever directly touch your ink samples. And also use a pencil to label which inks are used to keep track of it. The alcohol will rise up the paper and pull some chemicals up with it better than others, creating different patterns. You can match the patterns to match the ink. And it looks like the YouTube comment and ransom note were written with the same type of marker. Looks like possibly a Crayola super tip. That doesn't really matter, but it's me underscore Niels Bohr. I think we're on to you. To make sure this Niels Bohr character was actually in this room though, we'll want to use some fingerprint analysis. To look at fingerprints on paper or porous surfaces, we can use iodine fumes. This works best if the perp had oily fingers or if they rub their fingers on an oily part of their face, like by uh, touching their nose right before they touch the paper. We'll put some iodine in a Ziploc bag about this much. It actually doesn't matter how much you use. I'm using the iodine found in the first aid section of stores. Solid iodine crystals actually work best, but I don't have those. So I'll just pour in a bit of liquid iodine mixture and then carefully tape this Niels Bohr YouTube comment to the inside of the bag like this making sure the paper isn't resting against the side of the bag. You can wait about uh, 10 minutes and you should see fingerprints begin to appear. With liquid iodine, you may want to add some hydrogen peroxide to help with making the fumes and speed up the process. Once you can see a print clearly enough, take it out and snap a pic. We'll also wanna take some prints from a hard surface like this cassette tape here that was near Einstein before he was swiped away, or this microscope uh, glass slide, or perhaps a Pokemon card. I think it was Einstein's. First, make a little boat or box out of aluminum foil and pour some super glue in it. Then pour some warm water in a small dish or cup. Grab a container that you can seal tight. I'm using an old Tupperware container here and place the super glue box, the water cup, and the object to be tested inside the Tupperware. Wait about 10 minutes, it could take up to 30 minutes. This relies on super glue releasing fumes that cling to the oily fingerprints, which will turn the prints white. I placed my container outside to speed things up because it's really hot outside and uh, so that worked pretty well. Once the prints can be seen clearly enough, take it out and snap a pic. You'll notice that it didn't work well on the Pokemon card. Uh, that's because it's porous, so it would work better with iodine fuming uh, with that, but I would never desecrate a Pokemon card with iodine. Otherwise, comparing the prints side by side, it looks like this Niels Bohr guy was here and is probably our thief. Another common forensic experiment is DNA analysis. And look what we have here. Could it be blood? No, it's actually strawberry juice. You need special equipment to test human DNA blood. Uh, we don't have that. But strawberries have special DNA and we can make it so that you can even see or touch their DNA. Better than nothing. Take about one third cup of water, one fourth teaspoon salt, and two teaspoons soap and combine them in a Ziploc bag, preferably soap that is colorless. Throw in a couple strawberries and gently mash it up. The soap and mashing will help burst open the strawberry cells and nucleus exposing the DNA. 
Once pulverized, pour it through some cheesecloth or loose material to filter out the solid chunks that are left. Strong paper towels could work here too, it's what I use. Uh, I had to filter it through twice to make sure I got all the solid out. Take the liquid that comes through the filter and add about one third cup of cold rubbing alcohol. I'd throw the alcohol in the freezer first just to make sure it is cold enough. Uh, then you can carefully add the alcohol to the mixture and you'll see that a, a stringy white substance is rising to the top. That is going to be the strawberries DNA. Go ahead and give it a twirl. Sweet, right? But this plate is only evidence that someone ate strawberries and didn't wash their dish. Moving on. The last bit of evidence we have is this mysterious white powder. Forensic scientists will sometimes use flame tests to identify certain kinds of material or powder. Uh, so you'll want adult supervision for this since a flame, a fire is involved. Take a stick, uh, like a popsicle stick, and dip it in water and then dip the stick in the powder. For best results, then dip the stick in something with a high percentage of alcohol, like 99% isopropyl alcohol should work. I dip mine in uh, antifreeze, so a big safety note here, these liquids are very flammable and adults should be doing that. Different metals in the powder could make the flame turn different colors. Sometimes these colors can be hard to see. Here are some examples. Potassium, uh, like in cream of tartar or non-sodium salt, uh, it's called no salt, uh, will glow purple. Sodium in regular old table salt glows orange, and boric acid in borax will glow a greenish color. So testing the mystery white powder, it looks like a greenish flame, so we may have borax, which is used in the laundry. Perhaps that's where Einstein is. Let's go. <gasps> Einstein! And you, sir, you must be Niels Bohr. To the trash with you. Keep solving mysteries, keep asking questions, and keep on squinting.